What's up everybody? Welcome to another video and I hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video I have a pretty interesting problem for us to look at which is can you determine whether e to the pi is greater than pi to the e or e to the pi is less than pi to the e without using a calculator. So we want to compare these two quantities, determine which one is bigger, but not only determine Prove it. Prove to me that one is bigger than the other without using a calculator. So if you've never seen this before, I encourage you at this point to pause the video, pull out a piece of paper, and try this on your own. Explore, play around a little bit. This is, in my opinion, a pretty fun problem to look at. And it turns out that to solve this, really all we need is a basic knowledge of algebra and calculus. Both the solutions, the full solutions I'm going to show for this, just involve that. And in fact, I think this would be a great question to put on like a Cal 1 homework or an extra credit question or something like that because it really motivates the use of analyzing functions like curve sketching, finding critical points, finding intervals that are increasing and decreasing, using the second derivative test, those kind of things. It motivates those things in a fun context in my opinion. So without further ado, I've got my fresh piece of chalk here. We're gonna jump right into it. I'm gonna show the first method of how we can answer this question. And really this method just involves defining a function and analyzing that function and figuring out whether it's positive or negative or increasing or decreasing depending on which function we define. So in my time thinking about and exploring with this problem, I've come up with three different functions that actually work to answer this question. I'm gonna show all three of them and I'm gonna pick which one is my favorite and explain why it's my favorite, but I encourage you to look into the others as well. So the first function we can define that'll work for us is we can define this function f of x equals e to the x minus x to the e. And what we want to do with this function, what we want to show is we want to look at f of pi and determine whether this is greater than or less than zero. That's the question we want to answer. So why does this answer our initial question? Well, look at what f of pi is. That is e to the pi minus pi to the e. If that's greater than zero, right, if e to the pi minus pi to the e is greater than zero, then we must have e to the pi is greater than pi to the e. We can add this to both sides. And a similar thing follows if we find out that this is less than zero, then we can conclude this directly. So that's why this works. We can take this function, analyze it, find critical points, do that sort of thing, and determine whether f of pi is greater than or less than zero, and that will directly give us our answer. So the second function I found uses this idea of the natural logarithm. Right, and here is this function. I'll explain where I got this function. Let's see, x minus e ln x. So where did this function come from? Well, what I realized is that we have exponents here and we also have e. And anytime I see stuff like that, it's just really tempting to take the natural log because a lot of times, especially when we're dealing with equations that involve stuff like this, it makes our lives a little easier when we take the natural log, right? So then what I thought about is the fact that the natural log is an increasing function, which means that if we have something like ln of x is less than ln of y, well, this is true actually if and only if. This goes both ways. Then it must be the case that x is less than y. The same follows for greater than as well as the equality, right? This is an if and only if because the natural log is an increasing function. So what this means is that equivalent to proving e to the pi is greater than pi to the e, I can also prove ln of e to the pi is greater than ln of pi to the e, and then from that directly conclude that the original statement is true. Hopefully that makes sense. This natural log respects these inequalities, so I can prove another equivalent statement, which is written here, right? I just replaced the pi with x, the same I did here, but first I took the natural log. And really what we wanna show is the same thing. We want to show from this, whether f of pi is greater than or less than zero. So the same question we wanna show with this, but it turns out, in my opinion, this function is easier to deal with than this one. So if you're gonna choose one of these two, I recommend doing the second one and then at the very end saying, since this is true, we must have this, right? So explore that on your own because the final function is the one I'm going to use, which is this f of x equals, this time we're going to look at a ratio, e to the x over x to the e. And really what we want to show about this function is we want to show 
Well, we want, I guess I should say like want to figure out, right? Because we don't know exactly which of these we want to show. But we want to explore and figure out whether f of e is less than or greater than f of pi, right? So why does this work? Well, let's think about it. What is f of e? e to the e over e to the e. That is 1. So showing this statement here is equivalent to showing whether 1 is greater than or less than f of pi, which is e to the pi over pi to the e. And now look, if we multiply both sides by pi to the e, we get pi to the e is either greater than or less than e to the pi, depending on which one we figure out, right? So this is the one I'm going to use. I think it's the most fun, but I have worked out this problem using all three of these. They all work. And again, pause the video, play around with this. Maybe you can come up with other functions that work. Maybe even come up with one that's easier to deal with. That's awesome. Let me know in the comments below if that's the case. But I'm going to deal with this Third function, we're going to analyze it. We're going to try to determine whether f of e is greater than or less than f of pi. All right, so I went ahead and defined our function. f of x equals e to the x over x to the e. And remember, we want to determine whether f of e is greater than f of pi or f of e is less than f of pi. And it turns out we can do this using concepts from calculus, such as the derivative f prime of x. We can find this, and then we can find critical points and find intervals where this function is either increasing or decreasing, right? So first, let's take the first derivative of this function, and we can do that using the quotient rule, which I remember as the derivative of the top. So the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x times the bottom left alone, right? Minus the derivative of the bottom. This may look a little tricky, but we actually know this. This is just the power rule, right? x to some real number power, the power comes out in front, and we subtract 1 from the power, right? So the derivative of x to the e is e times x to the e minus 1, and then we multiply by the top, just left alone, and we divide all of this by the bottom squared, and that completes the quotient rule. And so first what we want to do is find critical points, right? Potential maximum or minimums of this function. And we can do that by setting this equal to 0, and then asking ourselves, what values of x satisfy this equation? This equals zero, right? And the way I've found is the best to do this is, especially since we have two terms up here in the top, is factor out something to where we have two things being multiplied together in such a way where it's fairly easy to look at it and figure out for what values of x do we have this equals zero, right? So hopefully you'll see what I mean. What I'm actually gonna factor out from the numerator is e to the x, times x to the e. And there may be other things you can factor out that work, that's totally fine, but I'm gonna factor this out and what I'm left with is one in the first term because that's literally just the first term is what I factored out. Minus, what do I have left here? Well, we have to use our exponent rules. x to the e minus one, this is a long equals sign, is the same thing as x to the e over x to the one. So if I want to take out e to the x times x to the e, I have the e to the x here, I take out the x to the e, and what I'm left with is an e and a 1 over x, which is just e over x, right? And in the bottom, I just keep that left alone. So notice that we want to figure out, so this equals 0, we want to figure out what x is satisfying this equation. So notice that we don't really care about what's happening when x equals 0, because that's not even defined in our original function. There's an asymptote there, right? So we're really looking at when x is greater than 0. So are there any values that we can plug in, any x values greater than 0, that make this entire thing 0? And the obvious one should be e. Right, because we have one minus e over e, which is one. One minus one gives us zero, okay? Here we have e to the e, e to the e, that's some real number. e to the e squared, that's some real number. So a real number times zero is a real number. So it turns out we do have a critical point at e. So we have, let's see here, f prime of e equals zero. So if we think about this original function, if we think about maybe graphing it, that means that here at e, which when we plug in e, we get 1. There's a point here, and it's either a maximum or minimum, right? And considering we want to determine whether f of e is 
less than f of pi or greater than f of pi. If we go a little bit past a pi, we want to determine is this going up from there or is it going down from there? That's the question. So hopefully that little basic visual gives you an idea of what we're trying to determine. So really we want to figure out if the first derivative is positive or negative for values bigger than e, but we also want to first make sure there are no more critical points, especially between e and pi. Because if there is, there's a chance that it could actually increase and then stop and then decrease again, and therefore plugging in a number will mess us up. But it turns out there isn't, we can, and we can convince ourselves of that pretty easily, right? Because as we plug in x values bigger and bigger than e, what we find is that we have this term out here is always positive. This down here is something squared. This is always positive. And here we have 1 minus e over x. As x gets bigger and bigger, this term here tends towards 0. So the entire thing tends towards 1. This is always positive as well. So it turns out that the first derivative is actually positive. So let me write this here. f prime of x is greater than 0 for all x greater than e, which means that the original function is increasing from e all the way to infinity. It's doing something like this, right? So we can erase that down there. We can erase the question mark. We know what this original function is doing, which means that if this is e and this is pi, f of pi must be greater than f of e. We must have this case where f of pi is greater than f of e. So this tells us, let me write it down here, big arrow, our conclusion, the final result, is that f of e is less than f of pi. And what does this give us, another arrow? Well, f of e is 1, and that's less than, what is f of pi? e to the pi over pi to the e. And final arrow, which we get by multiplying pi to the e to both sides, is that we get pi to the e is less than e to the pi. So it turns out that pi to the e is less than e to the pi, and hopefully this convinced you that was true, and obviously we did it without using a calculator. So the other two functions, the process, by the way, will be very similar, just the derivative is slightly different, finding the critical points is different, the graph looks different. This was my favorite for whatever reason, I don't know. If you used another one, that's awesome. You can still get to the same result. But I actually, to conclude, wanna show one more way to approach this problem that I'm not gonna take credit for figuring out, but I found it online and I thought it was pretty slick. So I'll go ahead and show that and then we'll wrap up the video. All right, so here's another method for answering this question. It's a lot quicker, it's pretty slick, and once again, I'm not taking credit for coming up with this on my own, but really to understand the proof, you again just need some knowledge of calculus, right? So here I have the series representation of e to the x. e to the x is equal to this series, which I've expanded out so we can look at what each term looks like, because what we're gonna notice is that all of these terms are going on forever here, right? All of these terms pass this x. If I plug in any positive x, each one of these terms is positive, right? What that tells us is that e to the x must be greater than one plus x for all x greater than zero. Because again, these are all positive. So if I have an x greater than zero, in order to get e to the x, I have to take one plus x and add some positive quantity, right? So we can therefore say that e to the x is greater than one plus x for all x greater than zero. And it turns out that this fact helps us prove that e to the pi is greater than pi to the e. Because what we're gonna do here is choose a specific x. There's a specific x that makes this work out really nicely, and that x is pi over e minus 1. So first, let's verify that this is, in fact, greater than 0. Pi is greater than e, so this is greater than 1. Take away 1, it's greater than 0. So yes, it is. Pretty straightforward there. And now we just replace x with pi over e minus 1, and it works out like magic. This really is a slick proof. So whoever came up with it, props to them. 1 plus pi over e minus 1. We're going to simplify this. e to the pi over e minus 1 is the same thing as e to the pi over e over e. And that's greater than, we have 1 minus 1, so those cancel. So that's greater than pi over e. And now what do we get from here? Here's an arrow to our next step. We can cancel these e's, right? 
So we get e to the pi over e is greater than pi. We just multiply both sides by e, right? And now we can raise both sides to the e power to get exactly what we want. Raise both sides to the e power, we get e to the pi is greater than pi to the e. Pretty slick, right? I thought so too. So hopefully y'all enjoyed this video and gave you something to think about. Enjoy your spring break. Don't forget to keep flexing those brain muscles and I'll see you next time.